This is a durian. And if you know what that is, you know this episode's gonna be... It's gonna be something. I'm making a drink with a durian. For one piece. Today I'm out of drink. <laughs> This is a manga and anime that's been around for a very long time, like a very surprising long time. And today, I'm gonna make a drink from One Piece using a durian. Not this durian, this one's made of plastic, thank God. Meredith, you know anything about One Piece? I know that it is an anime. It's an anime and a manga. Do you know the difference between an anime and a manga? I do not. Oh, a manga is like a comic book. It's the magazines. And then, yeah, yeah, okay, and then they get turned into animes on TV. You know the difference between an anime and a hentai? No. A hentai is porn. Oh. But drawn. A lot of times uh, people ask me if I'm into anime, if I like anime, as if anime is a genre. I kind of know what you mean when you ask me that. You're talking about shonen. I I'm not into shonen at all. Shonen, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know what the age exact group is, but it's anime for teenage boys. Anime for teenage boys. It's not my cup of tea. The characters are all very, very screaming all the time, always, and everything is an explosive kind of level of importance. And also, there's a lot of really emo-y melodrama, and everything is very heavy and very important, and super duper emotive in their performances. Nobody just like talks like regular people. Let me tell you what happened. I was gonna do an episode about One Piece, okay? I was gonna make this episode. I did a lot of research. I learned about some of the characters. I watched a couple of episodes. I looked into the world. I know about the, the islands. I know about that, the pirates. I know about the, the stuff. I know about the setting with the devil fruit. I know about the devil fruit. I used to know it better a few weeks back when I was gonna shoot this episode and then it fell off of our schedule. And that really sucks for me because this drink involves durian. Why does it involve durian? I'm gonna explain that better in a minute, but basically because devil fruit, it's a devil fruit. And that means that I had to make durian syrup. I made durian syrup. I had never touched durian before in my life. I made durian syrup in my kitchen. Nearly had to go to The Hague to testify against myself about war crimes. Uh, could have ended my marriage. Um, and you know what happened in the intervening weeks when I didn't shoot this episode? It went bad. So I had to do it again today. We went outside to make this. We, we literally went outside. I got masks. Now I know a little bit better. Um, I, I understand people like durian somewhere. I don't know why. I did make a drink that uses durian. This is that drink. Is it a good drink? You know, I haven't had it in several weeks since I wrote this recipe, so honestly, I'm gonna find out right alongside with you. What I remember about it is that it, it honors the ingredients. Like, the durian is present, not overpowering, enjoyable if you like durian. <laughs> Probably, that's sort of what I remember about it. What I wanted to say in all of that is that you're gonna have to bear with me. I knew more about this show and who the characters are several weeks back. I, I forgot their names now. So we're gonna call him that guy. That guy a lot. So the main character is this guy, Luffy B. Monkey. Or is it, it's Luffy D. Monkey. And actually I think I'm pronouncing it wrong. I think it's Luffy D. Monkey. It's coming back to me now. And he's not a monkey, for those of you who don't watch One Piece. No, he is a boy who wants to be a very rich pirate and find the last One Piece. The, I don't know how that works, but the One Piece is a great treasure. And he ate a, a devil fruit that turned him into a rubber boy. And so he's got rubber boy powers. That's his whole deal. And as a rubber boy, he can like swing his fist around and punch real hard. I think that he can't swim though. Yeah, that's like another thing with the show. Anybody, okay, so there's devil fruit, Meredith. Can he control his arms? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a superpower. Does he have an elbow? That's a great question. <laughs> I think he is often drawn with elbows, yes. Okay. Yeah, I don't think he's just like snake boy, just like <laughs> So here's the thing, in this setting, there are devil fruits, they, show up. It's not like there's a devil fruit tree. It's just like there's an apple tree and then something happens and one of them turns into a devil fruit. And there's only, I think, so many devil fruits in the whole setting. And when you consume a devil fruit, that fruit is gone from the universe until you die. And then it reappears somewhere else, right? So Monkey D. Luffy, Luffy D. Monkey, uh, he ate a devil fruit that turned him into a rubber boy. Now here's the thing about the people who eat the devil fruits, because they're all over. They can't swim. If they fall in the water, they sink and they drown. But they're all pirates! Check that out. Steaks. That's steaks. There's no... That's how you put steaks in. I think there's one guy who can swim, actually. It's like a big deal. That's his superpower. I, I, I'm not joking. 
Or there was maybe he's like unkillable and therefore the water doesn't. I forget oh, what it is. So yeah. Can survive yeah. Like water. I said, I forget this. And a lot of people said that there's this character whose name again escapes my mind. He's like a robot who is powered by soft drinks apparently and is lives on soft drinks. Yeah, I don't know. I, the devil fruit just called me, you know. And then there's another character who I think is the navigator who always is making drinks on the show. Uh, that, uh, that I should do some of the, those drinks there as well. Uh, that would require. Do you know how many hours of this show there are? There's, I'm not exaggerating. I think there's like 1,500 hours and it's still going. Yeah, that would be a lot of research. That'd be a lot of research. I asked Twitter uh, what I should know about One Piece and a lot of people jumped in and, and uh, answered that question very helpfully. Uh, thank you, people on Twitter. Some people suggested, based on my responses and my, my live watch of it, live tweeting of watching it, that boy, Greg reviews anime he's never seen might be a whole show. We're trying that. We're, we did that with The Chainsaw Man, I, I presume before this comes out. And uh, I don't know, that could be fun. Might do more of that. This episode isn't that. This episode, we're just gonna make the drink. I've talked a lot about the show. I honestly, I don't have anything else to talk about here other than making the syrup. And I'm gonna do that as a voiceover, but I'll tell you what it is right now. These are my very dangerous durian ingredients. I keep them in three Ziploc bags. The inner two have decayed, which is a problem. This is the deadly durian syrup. Okay. Oh God, the smell's already hit me. All right, we'll go to the inner bag now. This is the durian water that I made. This is the worst part about this. There was trial and error to make the durian syrup, oh. okay? Yeah. All right, so this is butterfly brand durian flavoring. This is what I used to my durian stuff. And apparently, I'm just reading this now, this is artificial durian flavor. Holy shit, man, that's some potent stuff. Look, it's really hard to get fresh durians um, in the US for the most part, and they only come around like one time a year. So I don't think that if I had access to fresh durians that that would be like a, a repeatable uh, recipe for you. The way that we made this is, this is my durian flavored water. The way I made it was by taking this and adding it to water at a ratio of 25 to one. So 25 parts water for one part of this. This is still very potent stuff. This stuff is insane. Um, and then you could, I should be wearing gloves. Honestly, we should do this episode naked or something, or like in a Tyvek suit, one or the other. Either wear nothing so that you can just like acid bath yourself when you're done, or like wear stuff you could set on fire when it's all over. Then I took my durian water and I made a, a two to one simple with it. I just did two parts sugar, one part this. And that's how you get these dangerous little spheres of durian syrup. And that's what we're gonna use for this recipe. So durian's a really big flavor. Honestly, that is the main thing that goes into this drink. The rest of it is pretty standard, honestly. Like there's not a lot that's gonna compete with it. All we wanna do is put that on a pedestal, lengthen it, make sure it is in there in a way that's approachable, palatable. Otherwise, this drink is gonna be a tiki drink. Uh, we're gonna use durian syrup, we're gonna use lime juice, we're gonna have coconut rum uh, in particular this coconut rum. We're gonna use a little chinola. That's probably the other big, big flavor in here. We're gonna use some OFTD and uh, some good old pirate. That's gonna be a big old tiki drink. And since we're doing a big old tiki pirate drink, we're gonna need a big old pirate tiki barrel to drink it out of. I think without further ado, I should just start making this drink. No delay, no time like the present. Let's make it happen. I'm just gonna cut up all my limes so that they are ready to go. Limes are cut. Now I'm gonna need my shaker. So the recipe that I have is for a smaller version of it. We're gonna double it up because we're making this for two. So if you wanna make it for one, just cut these numbers in half, but I'm gonna use double my original recipe, right? So I need one ounce of lime juice. I like the idea though that we're making it for two, Meredith, because that implies that you and I are gonna drink a whole one of these each. Oh. I'm gonna do one whole ounce of our Chinola passion fruit liqueur. I actually really like this stuff. A lot, a lot. Every bottle we're using here today is available at Curiata, drink.curiata.com. Here we go, one ounce of passion fruit. We got our lime juice, we got our chinola. Let's put in one ounce of OFTD. Remember, this is a double. Could even be a triple. You got such a huge, the size of this tiki mug we're gonna put this in is ridiculous. I want uh, one ounce of my Smith & Cross, bringing in a little Jamaican representation. And I want three ounces of coconut cartel coconut rum. And I mean only coconut cartel coconut rum. Do not replace this with Malibu or any such stuff. I really like this. I don't know the process, but it strikes me that it is rum that has been de-proofed using coconut water. It tastes like rum and coconut water. It doesn't taste like a coconut liqueur or something like that, or tanning butter. There may be other products on the market like it, but this is the first one I've had encountered that does that. And it's really cool. It's a much more subtle flavor, which sounds crazy, 
So we're putting it up against durian, but I trust that I knew what I was doing when I wrote this recipe several, several weeks ago when I should have shot this episode instead of letting my durian syrup go bad. Uh, <laughs> I hope past Greg is right. We sure do. Three ounces of that. You find out like there's like a note inside the shaker like, fuck you, future Greg. <laughs> I got <gotcha>. you. <laughs> what? The original recipe calls for one quarter ounce of durian syrup. We're gonna use a half an ounce of durian. All of a sudden I feel all of my will to live just like leaving me. All right, that's everything. We're gonna put some ice into a shaker and I'm gonna do all cracked ice because this uh, drink is gonna be an open pour. All right, we're gonna take our ice and we're gonna crack it into here. Yep. Mercy. Now we need our mug. All right, do an open pour into the vessel of your choice. Uh, take your shaker and throw it into the incinerator. All right, so I'm looking at this drink and I was like, we need to, we gotta tiki this thing up a little bit. So I wanna smoke this drink. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy. It wasn't part of my original recipe, but the vessel sort of demands that I do in this particular case. Uh, so we're gonna smoke it basically because of what I've got to serve it out of. So this is uh, my smoking gun. It used to be made by PolyScience in my case, but they're now made by Breville. We're gonna put some apple wood in there. I got these little apple wood chips. They're perfect. I'm gonna turn it on. I'm gonna light it with a wooden match. It's pretty cool. It smells really nice too, actually. It's good. It's, it kind of helps cover up the uh, smell of the durian. You know, that's one way you could do this drink. I think the smoke's actually gonna add quite a bit to it. We're gonna find out. We could also just do like a garnish, like normal humans. Meredith, I got two straws for us. You ready? Oh. Two great big straws. Cheers. Woo! You go ahead. What do you tell me? I just, the long straw actually makes it worse because I was a lot of anticipation. sucking in, but I could suck in the smell and I taste it. Once the drink hit, I didn't taste it so much. Oh, I see what you mean about the smell coming up the pipe. And it's bad. And then it goes away and it's not so bad. Right. So that's exactly right. What I find with this drink is that these straws, I've never used these straws before, but they're too much. This is too much straw. <laughs> so what I find with this drink, right, first off, I'm not gonna have like an immediate scrumtralescent experience with this drink uh, because I don't really like durian. But the thing is I can work with ingredients that I don't really like. There are subjective qualities to a drink that I look for and, and objective qualities that I look for in a drink. Subjectively, this is not really my drink. Objectively, this drink is a success for me because it doesn't bury or hide the durian, not really. It does honor that flavor and it lengthens it and moderates it so it doesn't just assault your face. The flavor profile does open heavy on durian. Um, you do get the nose of it up the straw for sure. And I don't wanna say like, oh, it's just this. Nope, that will be an experience of this drink. Like the odor, the, the smell of it going down your throat as you suck it up is a component of it. And then you do get briefly assaulted by it. That is quickly kind of knocked down a peg, I don't wanna say overtaken, by passion fruit and the delicious mixtures of rums and lime juice that kind of carries us out. From there, the durian kind of goes into a little bit of hibernation and rides us out, and it doesn't really seem to come back too strong for me. Making it manageable, making it, it it's something that, you know, you can approach, something that a person who wanted a durian fruit cocktail would like this. I just don't happen to want a durian fruit cocktail. Subjective, objective. This does the things a good cocktail, or a, certainly a good tiki drink, should do, in my opinion, but it won't be for everybody. That's just a fact. Let's see what else is uh, going on with this devil fruit. Oh, I was gonna call it devil, devil fruit stew. Let's see what's going on here a little bit more, see if I can pull apart. What does durian taste like? That's what was missing before. So what I haven't told you yet is what the durian actually tastes like. I don't know if I can describe it. Many people have tried. I'm gonna try. With the passion fruit, it honestly, it kind of tastes like rotting bananas and uh, with the passion fruit. But not like banana funk in a rum, but like actual rotting bananas. I'm a parent, by the way, and there's some other stuff that goes on in here that I, I've detected. It does also kind of smell, like I think I, uh, the smell of it reminds me of like, not reminds me, but it makes me imagine uh, somebody boiling baby diapers, just like uh, maybe even dirty ones. It's not good. It's not, it, nobody must like this smell. I've been told that in like Southeast Asia where durian is common, like there's signs in hotels that say no durian. Like you can't have durian in here and stuff. Like you know, this is a durian free hotel. Yeah, it's thick. Like it's a thick 
smell. I don't know if I can taste it anymore. I think the durian's fucked up my taste buds. You want to try and describe it? It's like, I let me see if I can stick with this, but I wish I knew what those trees were actually called because I'm not going to call them vagina trees on the show. You just did. It takes all of the flavor away, so it's it, it like erases everything at first, and it sort of comes back to you over time. I don't know what that. It's like neutralizing it. <laughs> it's powerful. It's it's the only flavor. It tastes like the trees in New York when they bloom. I think those are trees of heaven. Or, okay, I'll have to look it up, but uh, it's like, it's yeah. a thick smell when you're walking down the street. Yeah. It tastes like a bitter version of that. It's funny, I don't get bitterness. I never did. I get... Bitter's the wrong... Like rotting garbage? Bitter might be the wrong descriptor. There is a dump near me that sometimes smells real bad, and when you drive by it, it smells a little bit like this taste. Yeah. It's unique. It's very tough to compare this to another flavor. I've heard people say rotting gasoline or something, like gasoline and rotting flesh. God, actually, now that I say that out loud, I don't know how wrong that is. Yes, I could see it relating back to the smell of, like, decay. Putrid, intense decay. Gasoline, I don't know about... Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes you get, maybe not gasoline, but, like, some kind of petrochemical uh, shows up in there. And that's just my subjectivity. Objectively, this is a good durian cocktail. But durian itself is rough. I will say this, like, I've drank things on this show that, like, knocked me on my ass. This isn't that bad. It's just, ooh, yeah, that's the worst part. You get the, it, it comes back when you burp. Well, I mean, that's the one piece drink that I invented. I call it the devil fruit stew. It's got durian in it. I feel like this drink is, uh, it's unique. It's a durian cocktail. And I think that the devil fruit is durian. If there's a fruit of devils, this is it. And honestly, where the show comes from, I wouldn't even be surprised if this is what devil fruit is kind of referencing. This is how to drink the show by making cocktails and how to drink them. If you want more cocktails made from One Piece, let me know. I would do this again. I would do more cocktails. I don't know enough about One Piece to do more than this. So you got to give me a list. Give me a list of drinks you want from One Piece and uh, maybe we'll do it. Maybe we'll do that episode because I think One Piece is hot stuff. People love the One Piece. You know what I thought One Piece was? Just because I know anime stuff. I didn't know this. I didn't know it was about a treasure. I thought it was about like Hot girls and bathing suits. Well, that's what I would have thought. <laughs> Why okay. is it called One Piece? Because the, the One Piece is this treasure oh. that he's searching mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. It's about gold or diamonds and jewels and magic. Anyway, I've been on the internet for a long time making this show. There's other episodes of it. I did some anime before. We did an episode about Cowboy Bebop. I did an episode about Beat DBZ. Nobody watched that. Maybe anime is not a slam dunk. I don't know. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time on another episode of HGD. In the meantime, check out the other episodes of the show and you will find me in the social media places of Appearing before your very eyes. Goodbye, good night, good night, bye bye bye. Nah, I don't want any more. <laughs> yeah.